Hi, this is David. Um, just showing you a quick demonstration of uh, how to use this material that I made, or one way to use it. So the idea here is to think about rectangles, think about the area and perimeter of rectangles, and then a, a question that comes up a lot of times um, when thinking about shapes uh, is, how, how interior are these shapes and how exterior? And in lots of cases, what you want to do is maximize the amount of, of insidiness to a shape. So for instance, if you're building a house, it's often a good idea to enclose as much volume as you can with the least surface area because that makes it efficient. Heat has a harder time getting in and out. You can hold more heat that way if you're a cell, if you're a living creature. You often want to hold kind of as much insides as you can for the least amount of surface area. Of course, every bit of surface area, every bit of skin is a, is a risk point, right? And so here the question is going to be, though, the opposite question. How do you get the most surface area, the most outside that you can get? Um, you can ask either question you see there down at the bottom, but the challenge I set here is to think about to maximize the outsideness of this rectangle, um, which you might want to do, for instance, on a radiator or something like that. So we're going to define that outsideness as the ratio of perimeter to area. And now what we're going to do is just do the usual graspable math things we can do. You can see I've set up these, these objects over here. So I'm going to think about the area of a rectangle. I know that's the width times the height of the rectangle. Um, I can adjust those things with these sliders over here. And the constraint is they have to range between 1 and 9, each of them. And they have to be integer values. OK, so I know the area. That's, that's just width times height. And for the perimeter, the way I can think about it is it's, OK, it's A and B and C and D. And you can see I've got a little hint here, and I'm going to follow that hint. And I'm going to fill in those values as A, as B, as C, and as D. And then I'm going to go ahead and go straight from there and say, well, OK, one thing I know about A and B and C and D is that A is a width, right? C is a width. So I can fill those in. And B and D are both heights. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and fill those in. Great. And now from there, I can get to some other nice quick insights. For instance, my perimeter is going to be twice my width times twice uh, plus twice my height. Uh, height. Now the ratio of area, uh, perimeter to area, is going to be the perimeter divided by the area. So I'm just going to substitute in these values here. And now we've gotten to the real to the real action. And we could at this point just substitute in numbers. I'm actually going to wait to do that because I think there's this neat thing you can get if you sort of split these apart and you realize there's actually a, a separation here because the widths cancel on the one side, the heights cancel on the other. And you can see you get more outsideiness, right? More of your surface area is, is boundary, right? Um, if you have a small width and a small height, and those two things are kind of separate from each other. So you can see that just that comes out of what we've just done. But if you substitute in values, which we can do now, right, we can kind of see that in action. And we can say, OK, now as I adjust my width, right, the one number gets smaller. As I adjust my height, the other number gets smaller. Right? And we can, we can see that because those both come out of that area calculation. And the perimeter values kind of canceled out. So that's kind of a cool, cool fact about how this math goes. But then we eventually, of course, want to get just to a number. And what we can see is, as it should be, if we make that number really small, then we're going to get the maximum outside boundary relative to inside. And another neat thing here is, you know, if you wanted to maximize the opposite value, the outside relative to the inside, we could grab that too. Let me just do that really quickly for you. And there's a neat, there's a neat thing to notice about it. Um, so I'll go ahead and do the calculations. We don't get quite that nice same simplification, of course, because now our sum's down to the denominator, so we can't do that, that canceling trick. But that's OK. We can substitute in our heights and our widths. We get this kind of bound together value. And we'll go ahead and calculate that down to a number. Right? And then we get 1.125. Great. And here's what we can see. Right? We get the most insidiness when those values are as large as they can. And that makes sense. You've got the most space in here that's the product. You're adding up over here. And multiplication goes faster than addition, right? which is something your, your students might or might not be ready for, but it's an interesting fact here. Then the neat thing about the rectangles and what they have in common is that the one that maximizes the surface area, the, the outside perimeter, excuse me, is the tiny square. And the one that maximizes the inside in this is the giant square. Right? So they're both square shapes, just biggest and smallest. And we're used to thinking about the, the square as the shape that has the most area, the most inside, 
for a given perimeter among rectangles, right? Uh, but it might be interesting to think, oh, that's also the opposite is also true. The square is the shape that if you're constraining separately your, your um, side lengths, that's the one that maximizes the outsideiness too. Usually we think of for a fixed perimeter or for a fixed area. Um, and that's what makes this a kind of different result that's worth, that's worth thinking about. Here we're not fixing the area or the perimeter. We're just letting you vary the sides independently. And in that situation, the square is the answer to both of these problems, just a small square versus a large square.